Hello and welcome to our time. She was born in India. She studied filmmaking as a young woman. She left India. She went to Saudi Arabia, Canada, then Darwin, New Guinea, ended up in Sydney where she studied at the Sydney Film School. She then went back to India and made films in India. But now she's here. Parameta Roy, how are you? I'm very well. I can't be any better. And very travelled, according oh. to that. Oh, yes. That was a dream when I was young. I wanted to see the world. What a, well, what a way to see the world. <laughs> so just let's start back at the beginning. You were born in Kolkata, which used to be... Oh, was Calcutta? Calcutta then. But was it originally Calcutta or yes. was it Kolkata originally? And yeah, the English renamed it and it's gone Calcutta. back. Calcutta, that's right. Is that correct? Absolutely. It was okay. Calcutta. Oh, I know some Indian history, goodness me. Yes. So was that a hard start for you? Was there a film industry that you could work in in Kolkata? No, I left Kolkata when I was in my early 20s. I didn't have any opportunity to work in the industry there. Because I guess there wouldn't have been much opportunity for a woman either to work in the industry there. Actually, there are women uh, at the moment. There are many film di directors. But working. now? Yeah. But, but when you were 20? No, hmm. not really. Things have changed a lot Absolutely. in the world, haven't they? Yeah. Fortunately. Mm hmm so did you you studied filmmaking then did you no i just studied my i did my bachelor degree oh as a teacher yes and then you went to saudi arabia why yes. saudi arabia well um that was the first opportunity my husband got and we traveled i got married very early and then when he, i was in the early 20s um, we decided to travel the world that was our dream so that was the, our first opportunity and we travelled to Middle East. Right. The weather would have been quite different, I imagine. Yeah, but, you, you know, much different from North America where we went and had oh, a real Canada. shock. Uh, was it Canada or North America? <laughs> yeah, Canada. Canada. Uh, yeah. Snow's there. And um, USA as well. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was a real shock. <laughs> and then, then did you then, go to New Guinea? Yes, we went to New Guinea first and then to the North America and then that was too much. <laughs> so we ended up in Australia and right. we preferred the tropical of Darwin weather. That was wonderful. Well, that's understandable. But then you went to Sydney? Yes, to study. And that's where you studied filmmaking? Yes, I did. At, what after brought that on? Had you always wanted to be a filmmaker? I did. I grew up watching wonderful films by, you know, renowned filmmakers in India. And right. that made me passionate about learning the, uh, you know, this art form. And uh, it was a long time dream. But when I was working in um, Darwin, uh, there was a filmmaker from Sydney travelled to Darwin to do some workshops there and I went straight to my employer and I said I want to go and learn filmmaking. She thought I was crazy, my principal, <laughs> but right. she still uh, let me go, right. gave me uh, leave and I could go and attend the course. I think it was two weeks course so it wasn't easy to get a leave from and work. And quite short too uh, yeah. as a course. Yes, as a course but it was like a foundation. Yep. And that, and then we started Northern Territory Filmmaking Association from that, uh, after that course, so that we made a group, we could get together and make short films. And then we also started Down Under International Film Festival. Right. So we did a few things there because we are so passionate about film and uh, acting and filmmaking. But, but, but the stories that you made were just stories about people generally. It didn't have an Indian flavour? Well, all stories that I have made so far, they, it's not, I don't think about Indian or, or, you know, any nationality. What comes to my mind is about the theme. It has to be meaningful. It has to be really, um, you know, I have to be passionate about that. Sure. And only then I can make a project. Like the first project I made, it was about domestic helps, helpers in India. Mm -hmm. So we, a few students from AFTAS, we traveled to India to make this film. And it was about um, 11 year old Muslim boy who traveled to Kolkata to, make, uh, to find a job as a domestic help. 
right. and how hard it was for him. You know, he had to convert, you know, pretend to be a Hindu boy to find a job. So that was our first project. Right. And it was very well received. Actually, um, because I was working in Australia, I could see, you know, the children here take everything for granted. Oh, yes. yes. And that is, you know, very little knowledge they have about the world. How, how true. How children, you know, grew up in other places. How true. So when I made this film, I was very lucky because um, this story, this film was used as a teaching resource in Northern, Ter uh, uh, Northern uh, Can Canada, actually Canberra. Okay. Canberra, when Katie Gallagher was the education minister, she launched my project mm -hmm. and at the KGACT conference. So it was really good to see how teachers really welcomed this project and they were using that as teacher resource in the classrooms. So you've ended up in Adelaide, obviously, yes. where we yes. make this program, and you have created a performance for the Adelaide Fringe, mm -hmm. which is what led you to make a decision to go in this direction? Because one of the things that we chatted about was you like to write, mm -hmm. but you like also like to direct what you've written mm -hmm. because you know what you wanted. Exactly. It's, it's one of the funny things, a lot of writers don't know how to direct actors. Mm -hmm. They just know how to create the piece. Mm -hmm. But you've, you've taken it to the next logical mm -hmm. step, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I believe um, I need to understand the script, I need to be passionate about the story, and mm. only then I can, you know, transfer it from script to screen. Understandable. You know? And that is, um, that is the main reason I want to do. And I, I, I also believe that learning doesn't stop. I, I'm growing as a writer as well, as a film director as well. So I'm, I'm doing everything to improve my skills. When you say to improve, do, mm. do you mean so that your original um, dream, your original vision of what you wanted to see, mm -hmm. you're also expanding on that as well? Like mm -hmm. once you see it in your mind, but then you see an actor playing the role, oh, we could add this bit, we could add that bit. Absolutely. Yep. That's what is happening right now. Right. So the show is called Mums Behind the Mask. And what's the mask? Mask is like, you know, mothers usually wear different masks to, you know, hide their true feelings, true emotions. Sometimes they do it deliberately, you know. This is like with their children or with their husbands or with friends or mm -hmm. literally everybody. Mm -hmm. Do we all do that to an extent, do you think? Do, does everybody sort of hide behind a mask for the different people in their lives, for their work, for their friends, family? Yes, I'm sure everyone does. But mothers go to that extent, particularly in Indian culture. Right. You know, even if they're starving, they will say, no, I'm fine, don't worry. You know, that is the... It, it is true. It is I so know. true. It's crazy, though, isn't it? It is. Because as human beings, we definitely need to be honest with each other mm. or nobody moves mm. forward. Mm. That's why mothers are uh, called liars. You're lying to everyone. But why are they doing that? It's, it's, they have a reason because they don't want to upset anyone. Right. And the truth is, that is, a, is that a real Indian thing? Absolutely. Um, do you feel it's in our Australi Australian culture? Do, does what you've learned as an Indian woman, for example, mm -hmm. does that sort of just move sideways into an Australian culture if you've got Australian brought up children, for example? Because we're very much in this country greedy for everything. And I don't agree with you. because No? no because that is the myth, you know, in India, most of the pe people, they have that sort of, you know, uh, idea that in Australia... Mothers don't really care. Mothers. Oh, I think mothers still care. Yes, but, but, but they but, do fake as well, just to keep everyone happy. Okay. There are pe mothers that they would do that. Right. No, I. Mine mm. certainly did. Mine see? certainly was you a see? mother like. My mum was like that. Absolutely. Yes. She'd go without to make sure that you had exactly what you mm. wanted. And I suppose it's a mother thing. Have you found that in men? They're not mothers, I know, but. <laughs> question. 
Yes, probably they do as well. I shouldn't say they do. In don't. different ways, I mm. think, is probably the answer, speaking from the male kind. <laughs> okay, so we're going to meet one of the actors in the show shortly, mm -hmm. and we're going to just see a little clip from the show that hopefully will put everything in perspective. And we'll be back to do that in just a moment. And welcome back to our time. We're talking about a fringe show called Mums Behind the Mask with Paramita Roy, who's actually the writer and director, and Helen Capasso, who is one of the stars. Welcome, Helen. Thank you for having me. So how do you two know each other? Well, Paramita and I met while we were teaching at the same school about eight years ago. St Dominic's Priory College. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Adelaide. Mm. And... How did you know she could act? Oh, she she's didn't. such... No, she was the drama teacher. Oh, well. Oh, uh, yes. That says she it all. She was directing all the kids. Right. And I was watching her and I said, oh, my goodness, I have to work with her. She's amazing. That's wonderful when you can see that happen, isn't it? But see people who are not aware that you're mm. actually looking mm. at them mm. for something else. Mm. <laughs> so what has being in this show meant to you? And can you... Well, perhaps before, we, before you answer that, we've got a clip of some of the women in the show and perhaps we should show everybody that to start with. And by doing that, you'll get sort of an idea of the flow of the show. Currently, the virus is orbiting around us like a fly and controlling our lives. We need to control the microbes so they don't wipe out the entire human race. This is a high end scotch. I've not had anything like this in a long time. Actually, ever. We rise like a phoenix from the ashes. This is a transformational journey of three abandoned mums during the pandemic. It's not like living in a Kubrick movie. This show has elements of comedy and drama. Honey, I'm home. So where's my man? He drank a full bottle of scotch. Unbelievable. He needs a gastric lavage. Oh, trust me, one quick stomach pump and he'll never touch alcohol again for the rest of his life. So where is he? This is unbelievable. Are you guys housemates? So just explain to us, what is the play about? It's a play, isn't it, with a film insert in the play? Yes, we have a film as well. So it is about... Three... Which you made, I guess. Yes, yes of course. Of course. <laughs> so it is, and funded by Unley Council. Brilliant. I must make a mention there. So um, it's about the three abandoned mothers during this pandemic, how they were coping. Right. But on the surface, it is this. A simple story but it is also about friendship and how friends empower each other there is a myth that after a certain age we can't make friends but which is not true at any age if you're willing you can make friends and they can support each other and make it you know they and that's how it, they survive this pandemic right and what role do you play um, I play um, a homeless person, actually. So, Very well groomed for a homeless person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what happens is um, I befriend Paramita, and I guess what you were saying, this is about friendship, but it goes deeper than that because for each of the women, because this is an all-female cast, mm -hmm. for each of the women, their families have either deserted them or forgotten them, and so we actually find family and our friends and Paramita and I in the film and in the, the script are good friends and we're loyal. So has, has working together on the piece, has that made you stronger friends, do you think? Absolutely. I think so, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, last week we had on the show three of the boys from Men Who Dance mm -hmm. and they've genuinely, uh, genuinely they talk about each other as brothers mm -hmm. and they yeah. didn't know each other before the, 
before they started working together. So it, it's a lovely human thing mm -hmm. to happen, isn't mm -hmm. it? And I guess each sex can understand each other far better mm -hmm. than the opposite sex can understand. Mm. Actually, uh, Paramita and I were friends before the show, obviously. Oh, and we've well, been you friends knew each for, other for eight years. Yeah, so we've sort of, she refers to me as family anyway. We've sort of just clicked when we when we met isn't and it it's been like that. It, mm. Isn't it great when you do meet people, though, that you have that instant sort of affinity for? Mm. Yeah. It, do you think this is just part of the human condition? Do you think you knew each other in another life? What do you think? Oh, that I never thought about it. Now I will. Is that a deep and meaningful question? Oh, there's that the conversation. new show for next year. <laughs> <laughs> but we have had that conversation a couple of years ago. Mm. So um, it's like we've been friends forever. Mm. Um, yes, it's what it's like, isn't it? It is. So there's that sort of natural... Um, mm. friendship that's just happened. So mm. in the play, how does this work? Is Are they monologues in the play? Are you doing dialogue together? We how do. does the whole thing come together? We you? have dialogue mm. and then we, when we practice, we just make little amendments. Oh, when you're rehearsing? Yeah. Yes, okay. we practice uh, we, when we yep. rehearse mm -hmm. and then we put it together and um, then that's how it is. That's the show. Mm. 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 So you're, it's a limited season, isn't it? Yes, only two. That's why we can't even qualify for the awards or anything. Right. Because we have Do another only one two then. shows. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Easy, see. I'll fix that for you straight oh, away. <laughs> that would be great because uh, we were told when we uh, applied that. Um, okay, I understand that. There are certain rules with those mm, things, mm, I understand. Mm. But... Um, you're really hoping that this may go further for you, that this Absolutely. piece and the performance? And you know, there are requests from Canberra, from Darwin. This morning I got a request from Darwin saying right. that please bring it here. And then Canberra, people are coming from travelling to uh, Adelaide to see this. this oh, brilliant. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so there are now people. Now you found that on TV. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> No, but to have pieces, this is what it, the fringe is all about as well. It's to have experimental pieces, to, to yeah. tackle subjects that maybe haven't been tackled by the mainstream before. Mm. And this sounds like one of those, and particularly talking about the pandemic, because mm. it affected everybody's mm. life yeah. in different ways. So getting your take on how it affected mm. people is different to perhaps somebody else's, mm -hmm. but the somebody else hasn't really considered your take. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I researched for almost a year. Right. And these, all the short stories we have in the, um, you know, the script, they're based on true stories, how people really, what they experienced during the mm. pandemic. Now, it's probably a bit of a crass question to ask you, but what's mm. your target market? As if I can't work that out. <laughs> <laughs> I know, um, but target market will be mothers. Yep. No matter what age they are, yep. in, you know. And, but, but, but would it... W or should your target market also be fathers who are under to better understand what mothers are thinking? Yes, absolutely. Why not? But we have all, actually, we have young ones, like young people. We have elderly people. We have middle-aged people. So, Like me. <laughs> I'm pretending to myself I'm still in middle age. That's the joke. Oh, 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 yes, <laughs> um, so... As you said, the only council funded this for you. We got a small funding for, right, to, a make grant to make this yeah. film. To make the film. Yeah. So how important to you was getting that to start the whole process? Oh, that was so important. The reason is because we were all artists were going through a really, very I mean, depressive stage at that time. And well, I'm talking nothing about was, nobody could do nothing anything. we could do. Mm. And because of the COVID restrictions, we had to rehearse on Zoom. We used the mm. Zoom platform okay. yeah. to rehearse. And because uh, everyone's safety was a concern, and we had um, a 70-year-old working, one of our actors. Mm. So it was So you've easy. been working on this for quite some time, mm. Mm. for only two performances? We will see how That's we go. That's art. Yeah. <laughs> That's genuinely working for art's sake. No, my compliments to you because... Um, finding finding a concept that's original, different, developing it, mm -hmm. making it uh, uh, able to be seen by people, it's it's quite a, a big step, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it takes over your soul almost. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
And we'll be back to talk a little bit more about Mums Behind the Mask with Paramita and Helen in just a tick. Welcome back. We're talking to the two girls or two of the girls from Mums Behind the Mask. So what we need to know is this is on in the Adelaide Fringe, isn't it? Yes. So where's it on? When's it on? And how do you get a ticket? Well, it's Star Theatres 2 mm -hmm. on the 17th and 18th of March. That mm -hmm. is a Friday and Saturday between mm -hmm. 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock. And... Um, and tickets are available through French Ticks. Right. So if you're living in Melbourne, you can hop on a plane and come and see it. Absolutely. People are already coming from Canberra and yes, the NT are. to mm -hmm. see it. What is your hope for the future for a piece like this? And what sort of benefit do you think it will be for an audience to come and see it, either of you? Yes, we want people to understand and know, and it's sort of an awareness. Uh, we would like to travel. We would like to take this in other states and territory so that others can view this and because they they're they're a request already mm -hmm. Helen, would you like to say i think it's just it's a little bit of fun as well for oh. me being on the stage it's having fun with these other performers being a oh. drama teacher and making kids do it now you have well to. now i get the chance to do it and it's wonderful to be back on stage again so mm. thank you for parameter for that opportunity but it's really great for an audience to see something that really impacted our lives like that mm. you know pandemic but you know a lot of people are over it now and want to move on but we've sort of taken a little bit of history and now i think you know we're laughing at it a little bit too. True, but are, yeah. aren't a lot of the best known stories really part of a historical thing that humans have been through anyway? Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. So this is a bit of fun. It's got a little bit of an edge to it. Um, and of course there's some um, drama in it as well. So, so will we come out of the theatre feeling good? Uh, Why not? Will, we, yes. will, will our minds be expanded? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely, mm. yeah. I love it when you answer together. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah. Paramita's done a lot of research. Yeah. So I've actually questioned her. Often I've questioned her and said, how about, and she says, well, actually, I've done some research. And yeah. And I think, okay, she knows what she's doing. So Brilliant. Um, well, look, good luck in the future. Have you got more things on the boil? Thank you very much. Have you got Have more you shows on the boil yes, like this, though? Yes, absolutely. There will be more coming. This is just the beginning, and we'll see how it goes because audience reaction is very important. Absolutely. We have incredible cast working really extremely hard to make this a successful show, mm. and therefore we need an audience to tell of us. Course. <laughs> of course. Of course. You can't do it You without. know, as the general public actually need to get out and see things while yeah. a thing like The Fringe is on mm. because... It can blow your mind. There can be yeah. so many things for you to pick up. A sincere thanks to both of the girls. And keep yourself nice till next time we meet. Go see a friend's show. See you next time on Our Time.